Right, so it's been a while since I did a favourites, but today's video is going to be a little bit different because I'm going to be doing my favourites, but I'm also hoping that it'll double as a Christmas suggestions. Um, and it's going to be covering a very wide um, range of things. There's going to be jewellery, there's going to be art stuff, there's going to be makeup. So hopefully from all this jumble of things that I'm about to show you, you'll hopefully find something which either you want for yourself or maybe you know someone who you think that would be a perfect gift for but I hope you like it. Since this is a makeup channel, I thought I would start off with makeup and I'm also going to start off with special effects. If you haven't, um, what's the word I'm looking for? If you're only just getting into special effects or you know someone who's only just getting into special effects, a lot of people keep asking me, what would you recommend for someone who's only just getting started? And one of the main things I would recommend are things like this, which are the Ben Nye palettes. Uh, this one on the top, this one is called the Master Brews. And obviously, as the name suggests, it's very good for bruising. Uh, it's also quite good for zombies as well. But they also do have one which is particular to zombies called the Zombie Wheel, I think. Um, and then there's this one, which I've used quite a lot recently. And I think this one's called the Severe Exposure Wheel. So those two are two wheels that I very much recommend. However, they are quite expensive. Another two things that I could recommend, which are much cheaper, are these. And they're the dupes of the, what's it called? Um, Smashbox Flash Palette, I think it is. Um, and the, from what I remember, the palette is 50 pounds plus each. It's a lot. Um, and these, I think, are around eight pounds each. Uh, massive difference and they're really really good. I have tested them against the flash palette. I haven't done a blog review for that unfortunately. At some point I really should do a comparison. The only way in which I thought the flash palette was marginally better is I remember their silver and gold being a tiny bit better. Um, the silver and gold in these are very weak. Um, you will need to apply quite a few different coats but to be honest when I got these I wasn't mainly getting them for the silver and gold. I was getting them for all the different primary colours and then this one as well. Um, this one I want to use for a mummy look that I'm going to be doing at some point. I'm not sure when, but it's one of those ones which is on my list. So if the Ben Nye palettes aren't the kind of thing for you, then hopefully these would work as well. While we're still on special effects, another thing I'm going to recommend is Rigid Collodion. Now I have two little pots here, and if you can, I would recommend you go for the big one. The reason being that the little ones dry up so easily. I think this is the fourth pot I've had where I've only used it a few times and it's completely dried up. I don't know why, but the little ones, even if they're in a drawer and they're far away from any kind of radiator where they might accidentally get a little bit too warm and dry up, they just dry so easily. And then this one I've had for months and used for a few times and it's still absolutely fine. So if you can, maybe get the larger bottle, that's all I would recommend, but this is something that's very, very good to have in your kit, whether you're only just starting, whether you've been doing special effects for years, it's just so useful because it makes scars so easy to do. You've seen my tutorials, I think I did a Dragon Slayer look at one point. Um, I can't remember when I last used this, but I will be using these in a few more tutorials soon. But it's a very good thing to give to anyone who's into special effects. The last two things on my special effects list are sweat and tears, and these are just fake sweat and tears. Um, it doesn't dry up, which is obviously quite important. You can use water if you're trying to do fake tears, but obviously it evaporates. And what I like about this is obviously it lasts for hours. And then another thing that I'm going to recommend, and this is Magic Blood Powder. And it looks like powder, and you just dust it onto the area, but as soon as water comes in contact with it, it looks like you've just been freshly cut. One thing I would not recommend you do is accidentally get some on your neck and then have a shower. You will give yourself a heart attack. So um, be careful where this ends up. Next I'm going to go on some more wearable makeup. I'm going to move on to my favourite BB cream and this is called the Claire's BB cream. I'm wearing it today, I'm not wearing a ton today. Um, I've just one of those days where I don't really want to wear a ton of makeup. But what I really like about this is it's so light and it's very buildable. It's not the kind of thing that you could build up to a heavy coverage. Um, I think you'd end up looking a little too oily if you did that. But it's also got SPF 40 as well. And what I really like is that when I take this off, my skin feels so good. It feels like I've had a face mask on all day, which is exactly what I want. I hate when I put on foundation and then I take it off afterwards and I think, oh, I'm gonna pay for this in the morning. And I don't get that problem with this. So it's a BB cream that I can highly recommend. And then from the same brand, I've got something called the Glow Finish Stick. Actually, no, it's not from the same brand. Sorry, that's my mistake. This is from a brand called Beyond and it is the best highlighter I have used. Uh, there are two other highlighters that I really, really like. They're from MUA. From what I remember, they're either one pound or three pounds each. Um, I 
can't remember the name of them. They're really good. But this one's even better. It is so good. It's got more of a pinky undertone, this one. I think you can get another one which is more of a bluey undertone. But again, I've used this one quite a lot and it blends out so, so easily. It is an absolutely beautiful highlighter. And then for blush, I can very happily recommend this one. I bought a few of these while I was in, I think it was New York. Um, and then I definitely picked some up while I was still in LA as well. But they're just so beautiful. I mean, look at it. I don't know, I'm a little bit of a sucker for anything with a rose pattern. I actually don't like roses. The smell, I just, oof, I don't like it. Um, but the pattern is beautiful and they have all these different colors. This one isn't my absolute favorite. I'm trying to remember what my favorite's called. I I remember it being called Nude Rose, but I could be completely wrong. This one's Tea Rose, um, and it's also very, very beautiful. My favourite one's got more of a beigey colour, um, and I like it because it gives you that sun-kissed glow on your skin. Um, and this one's more pinky. I tend to avoid pink just because I get quite a bit of redness, but if I've put a decent amount of foundation or concealer, then I'll wear this kind of blush, and it's beautiful, and I love it. And it's a blush that I can highly recommend. The next two things I'm going to recommend are a little bit more wearable, actually they're very wearable. The first one is the Brow Tones, and this one was by Coastal Scents. They sent this to me years ago. Um, I don't know if they still sell it, but I think recently in my videos I found pretty much exactly the same thing, and I listed that on the description box of my videos. So it's not from Coastal Scents, but you can get a dupe which is pretty much identical. And what I like about this is that there's a colour for everybody. It doesn't matter if you have very dark eyebrows or very pale eyebrows. And what I also like is it also has one with a red tone. And these two colours are the ones that tend to drive me mad when I'm doing makeup on other people because it's such a nightmare to find them. Fine, you can find things like black very easily and to be honest for myself, what I use is I use an MUA eyeshadow. This is the kind of thing that I think anybody who's just getting into makeup or someone who's trying to build up their kit to be a professional makeup artist, especially a bridal makeup artist, I think they would love this. So yes, this is another one I'm going to recommend. And the next thing was something that I was sent by Urban Decay a few weeks ago and I think it's their best palette. I have used some of their other palettes, I think, um, what's it, the original Naked palette and then the, I can't remember what the second palette was called, but this one's called the Naked Ultimate Basics and it's fantastic. It's so good, I actually bought one for my mum and my mum hates makeup, she will not wear it, but she liked this palette. This isn't necessarily something that I would recommend for someone who's a special effects makeup artist or a professional makeup artist. I like it when the pans are a little bit bigger if I'm working on someone else, just because then I don't have to be very strategic with my brush. Sometimes when you're in a hurry, it's very easy to accidentally um, pick up eyeshadow from a different eyeshadow pan if the, the pans are very, very thin like these are. So I prefer ones which are more rounded or even square and a tiny bit larger, just so that I don't accidentally miss and then end up with red eyeshadow when I wanted blue. Though I do tend to color code my eyeshadows so that whatever color I do end up with, it's not gonna be too far removed from what I'm using. But this is a palette I think anyone who's into makeup is gonna love. Next we're going to move on to my skincare favourites. I don't think I've talked that much about my skincare favourites. I know one of them I definitely have recommended on my old channel, but I'm gonna recommend it again just because it's so good. And this is the Error Organics Relief Cream. And this one's mainly marketed towards people with eczema and rosacea, um, but I think it's absolutely fantastic. I use this as a body cream now because recently my face cream has kind of been replaced by this one. It's the Frankincense Hydrating Cream, and this one's from Neil's Yard, and it is expensive. This one is a little more affordable. I can't remember the prices for all of these, so what I'll try and do is I'll have these all listed in my blog post. So if you go to the link down in the description box, I'll have a link of where you can get these. And this one mainly sells in America. I think only recently they started to sell them in England, which is good. I wish that had happened when I was buying them because I had to pay some slightly terrifying shipping fee to get it into the UK. But now I'm pretty sure that they sell on the UK Amazon as well. So if you're in the UK or if you're in Europe, that should make things a little bit easier for you. But now I mainly use this one as a body cream and it's very, very good for your face anyway. But for my face, it's kind of been replaced a little bit by the Neil's Yard Frankincense Cream. This one is expensive. Um, a lot of these things tend to vary between affordable and then quite expensive, but hopefully I'll have enough suggestions where you'll find something regardless of your budget. But I love this cream. It's fantastic. And 
I don't really know what else to say. It's so good. They're both really, really good. I prefer this one a little bit more, um, just because in the winter especially, I find that my skin needs a little bit more hydration. And this one is hydrating, but this one's a little bit more, and this one feels a bit more luxurious. So, yeah. It is a bit of a mixture of the two. I use this one for kind of decolletage, arms, anything like that, legs as well. Um, and it goes a very, very long way. I think this is the third tub I've bought, so yeah, this one's a big favorite. And then the last thing I'm going to recommend is something that I'll wear if I go out. Um, and this is the Andalou Ultra Sheer Defense Daily Defense, and this one's got SPF 18. And the main reason I got this one is because it's got SPF, and I like to try and wear SPF if I know I'm going to be going out for the day. Most of the time, my days are pretty planned. I don't tend to go out during the daytime, which makes me sound a little vampiric. But I don't. I tend to work during the day um, and I tend to go out during the night. Um, but if I do know that I'm going to be going out for the day, um, then one thing I will definitely do is I'll apply this, especially if I'm going into London. I'm a little bit funny about being a little more intense about my skincare routine if I'm going into London because I've noticed that every time I go into London and then I come back, when I clean my face, there is literally black dust on my skin. It's disgusting. Um, I blame the tube, the tube is just oh, it's disgusting. Every single time I go to London I come back with a flu or a cold or something like that but obviously because I'm in front of the camera a lot I tend to be a little bit picky about my skin because I'd rather spend an extra five minutes every morning and take care of my skin than have to apply horrible amounts of foundation next time I'm in front of the camera so I'm very picky about it so if I'm going into London or if I'm going out for the day I will use this just because it has the SPF and it's always created a very nice barrier on my skin and protected my skin from any rubbish in the air so another one I can highly recommend. The next two things I'm going to talk about are perfumes. One is a little more budget, the other one is not budget at all. Um, the one that really isn't budget is from, and I'm going to butcher this name, I know it, Pentelagoon, I think it is, um, and the colour, not the colour, <laughs> the perfume is Equinox Bloom and this one's a very sweet floral without being a sickly sweet kind of smell. I'm not very good at describing smells. I've actually got a very bad sense of smell, which is one of the reasons I like perfume because it's one of the few things which is strong enough for me actually to be able to smell it. Um, and then this one is one that I'm sure I've blogged about. It's the Nina Ritchie. What one's this one called? I can never remember. Yeah, made in France, duh. For some reason it doesn't actually have the name on it, but obviously I will link this down in the description box. As you can see, I've used quite a lot of it. I've got quite a few different perfumes and I tend to vary just because I don't like to use the same perfume every single day because I find that I get used to it and I can't smell it as well. So what I'll do is I'll kind of alternate them depending on my mood. This tends to be my weekend um, special occasion scent um, and this one tends to be going into London need a little bit of a boost type scent. Um, this one I would describe as a little more of a sultry smell and this one is a little more of a sweet smell. Um, if you want better descriptions of the smells, I'm pretty sure the respective websites will have a much better description and there's also some very good bloggers, some perfume bloggers, which do some very uh, very good descriptions of different perfumes. Um, but I think if you like things which are a little more floral, but they're not necessarily floral and sickly floral, if you know what I mean, then I think either of these would be a good suggestion. Before I move on to the art stuff, I'm going to recommend two things which are more for reading and writing. Um, the first is, well, it's not my Kindle, it's more the case. Um, I really like things which are retro, vintage, uh, I love red, um, it's one of my favourite colours. I love that more burgundy, dark, burnt red, I think it's a beautiful colour. And this is a cover that I think I found on eBay a while ago, but I'll have a link to this down in the description box. And it just makes me happy to look at it. Every time I pick it up, I'm like, it's so pretty and it's got all the lovely little floral patterns. patterns embossed and it's got the gold and as some of you know I've recently got into gold big time which is quite funny because I hated it for years and then I just caught the gold disease and I don't think I'm going back and then the other thing that I'm going to recommend is this book and it's called 500 words you should know and I got this because I was on a train my kindle had died and I was really bored and I thought oh I need to read something and I saw this and I bought it and it's fantastic, it's so interesting, it's got all these words that you don't always think about and they've also got very good descriptions and what I like doing is every few days or if I'm writing what I'll do is I'll go through and I'll just 
have a look at the words and it's not something that I'll necessarily try and put into my writing but it's something that I try and think about and just try and broaden my vocabulary because what I like about words is that you, there's always a word which is so specific and so perfect for what exactly you're trying to describe and sure you can describe it in simpler shorter words but what I like about slightly longer words and words which aren't used very much is that they tell a much more precise story and so that's one of the reasons I really like this book. The next two things I'm going to talk about are going to be art things. The first one is from a company called Faber and Castell and I've used their pens for a very very long time. They're really really good. I think I bought the first set of pens in Hobbycraft um, just because I seen them and I've been using polychromos, not polychromos, what are they called, pro markers for years um, and I was looking for something which would have a tiny bit more of a finer nib um, and something that wasn't quite so thick I and mean, what I really like about the pro markers is they're great for things like architectural drawings, I used them to death while I was in uni for graphic design. Um, then I wanted something which would be nicer for the details um, and also I quite wanted to compare with other brands and so I tried out this one after I tried a few of their other colours. I think I bought a grey set and it was so good, it was so good for some of the concept drawings I was doing for Outsider and this one is their full set. Obviously this is the kind of thing that you can get anyone who's an art addict. What I really like about this is that it comes out like this in these little layers and then obviously they're going to come out wonky because, you know, for some reason they just want to make me look bad, but normally they come out very nicely and very smoothly and they've got a really good selection of colours. And like I mentioned, the nibs are very fine, so I'll see if I can show you. I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, but it's really good for very, very small details. And what I normally tend to do is I'll use the pro markers for covering large areas very quickly. And then I'll use these if I'm trying to maybe draw some really beautiful trimming around the bottom of gown. So if I'm doing some of the concept design for some of the characters and outsider, what I'll do is I'll use the pro markers just to get the basic colours in the background, in the dress, maybe the skin tone. And then I'll go in here for all the tiny little details um, because I find the nib is a tiny bit better for that. These are also some other pens, but then also some cases that I can recommend because I think a lot of people who like to do art like to keep things generally organized. Maybe when they're painting or they're drawing, everything becomes a complete disaster. But normally I like to keep everything in a box or in its own case. And so I found these cases on Amazon. And what I like is that I can arrange them like this and they can have all the different brands. And these are some more of the Faber and Castell pencils. These are duplicates of the colors that I tend to use an awful lot. Um, and then I think these are a Japanese brand. I'm going to try and remember the name of them. If you don't really want to get your hands on the Faber and Castell pens or if you're not particularly interested in the pro markers, then these are a really, really good budget brand. And don't think that just because these are budget, these aren't that good. They are just as good as the Faber and Castell pens. And what I also like about them is the nib. Now, hopefully I can show this to you without breaking the pen. But if any of you have used those traditional Chinese watercolour pens, um, not the paintbrushes, the pens, and they've got that really beautiful nib, um, obviously it's going to be good for very different things and for a very different style. If you want something which is closer to traditional Chinese or Japanese watercolour painting, then you're going to love this. Especially if you don't really want to have to mess around with watercolours and you just want something which is more functional and just straight from a pen, then you'll really, really like this brand. And I keep all of them in this pack. And what I like about this is that I can just unzip it and then I can see all the colours right there. And also it's not just one layer because there's two, I can pack an awful lot of these. And all these pens that you saw here and then also on the other side, that is all the pens that you can get from the Karateka line. Um, it's every single colour that they have that I'm aware of. I could be wrong on that, they might have extended it, but at the time that I bought the pens, those were all the colours that they offered. And then these are a few of my extra ones and then my good old trusty uh, Japanese watercolour pen, not watercolour pen, brush pen. The last few things that I'm going to mention are jewellery pieces. Two of them I've already mentioned in I think my gold rings video that I did a while ago and these are from Ember's Jewellery. There's just the plain gold band and what I like about this is it's got a pattern on it that's very similar to the pattern of a twig and then there's this one which is just a gold ring with a diamond in the middle. And then there's this one, they're both from Etsy. I found these on Etsy and Etsy recently has just been my kryptonite. So I've probably got to delete my account just to, to save my purse. <laughs> 
because it's not good. Uh, these I got, I think they're a Turkish seller and they do these really beautiful Byzantine pieces. I love anything which looks Roman or Byzantine. It looks black but it isn't actually. It's very, very dark green and then this one which is just got a white crystal in the middle and then four little gold bobbles on the side and they're beautiful. I love them. They're a very happy addition to my collection. And then there's this one, also from Etsy, because I have a problem. But I can't say no to pretty jewellery, which I've really got to stop. But this one's just a gold necklace, and then it just has some very, very small pearls on it. And I really like this one because it's the kind of thing that you can wear casually, but you can also wear it to a very nice event if you're more dressed up. But it's that simple, understated elegance that I really like about it. And even these, I know they're quite big and bulky, and to be honest, most of the time I'll wear double the amount of jewellery on my fingers. I like to wear a lot of different rings, but today I thought I should probably keep it simple. And then the last things that I'm going to mention are these. And these are just some lovely drop golden earrings. I like two extremes. I like jewellery which is very delicate and dainty, and then I like jewellery like this which is very bold and dramatic. So I tend to alternate between the two. Those are my favourites and my Christmas suggestions. I hope you like them. I hope there's a, a good few suggestions. It's a little bit of a mishmash of things, but my life is a bit of a mishmash of things. There's uh, not really much I can do about that. But anyway, I hope you like the video and I'll have a new video for you soon.